Good morning everyone, we are now headed to Gobekli Tepe. It's supposed to open at 8, so it just opened, but it's only around a 25 minute drive, so we should get there shortly. So we are here now at the exhibition center, we just went through the ticketing. The entrance is 55 and you are also able to buy an audio guide, I think 45 Turkish or more. And it's interesting just to be able to read everything about it before you actually go see it in person. Most of these things look pretty new and I still see a lot of people here working on constructing new things. So it leads me to believe that they're investing a lot more in this archaeological site as they should because this should be one of the next biggest things here in Turkey and in the world. But now we're going to the actual site which is I think or hopefully just a short walk away, we'll see. So once we got to this other spot, there is actually a place where you scan your tickets again and then you wait for a shuttle, but it's good that they have this service. So we are now walking to the top of the hill and actually Quebecli Tepe means Papeli. At the highest point is where you'll find the archaeological site. We're really liking how organized and well kept everything is. They make it easier for tourists to come and be able to drive here or even just take a taxi if they need. It's a lot smaller than I thought it would be. Every time I've seen it in videos, it looks a lot bigger. Not to say that it's small, but it does look different here in person than when I've seen it in videos. We learned that this site was discovered in 1963. And it wasn't until Klaus Schmidt actually researched more about this that they found the true importance of this site. And he continued excavating here until 2014 when he unfortunately passed away. I think in a couple years more we will see a lot more about Gobekli Tepe because there's so much potential here. Like there's some pillars that aren't fully exposed and then you can see some that are just barely peeking out. We're here now at the opposite end of the entrance and this is building C which is the largest one. You can see these huge T-shaped pillars which are right now being supported by some type of structure because while they are preserved they're obviously 12,000 years old. So as we mentioned earlier it's great that they've really developed this area because we really like the aesthetic here and just all the architectural features and how they've showcased this um, archaeological site. Yeah I really like how there's like a wave to the design so if it's lower um, it goes down and then it goes up and then there's a tarp covering it over so right now it's not sunny but it still helps a little bit. Right now it's kind of cool but on a hot day I can imagine this would be perfect. So make sure you look at these pillars from all angles because some of them have stuff in the back that maybe you don't see from the front end and so it's good to just take a second look because we even missed some of these things that uh, we hadn't seen when we first looked at the building. Like this one I hadn't seen that on the side there's an engraving of an animal. Yeah and again make sure you come early because as it gets later more people come and now we don't have the site anymore to ourselves but we are going to some of the other buildings that aren't part of this main one. Now we're headed to this walkway on the top. It's pretty windy up here but make sure you come up here because not a lot of people do, they stick to the main one and from here you can get great views of the entire surrounding and a ton of mountain ranges so definitely come up here. You can see behind me that there's another excavation site that we still don't have access to yet and over here people are working on the fields. As we were heading toward the shuttle we ran into building F which is remarkably smaller than the main exhibit. It's so cool to see, I mean they have the same uh, T-shaped pillars in a smaller scale. And you can see out here where they're already building out the walkway to what will, I guess at some point in the future, be another exhibit. And the last area of the map was building E, which is a rock temple. So you can't see much of it unless you can see there's some shape to the rock itself. But nothing like the Anderson main exhibit. So now it's super busy. The parking lot was empty when we got here. And now there's just some cars. like this, it has the spice as a whole and then it has a grinder, which is a cool design with copper. This place is cool because it even has a cafe in here and a ton of different merchandise that you can get. Now we're going to head back to the hotel so we can have breakfast. We're pretty hungry, but overall definitely come here. Um, after all, it is the first temple in human history and predates some of the things that we thought before were the oldest. 
think it's completely worth it. I encourage more people to come out here. Yeah, definitely come check it out before it's too busy. And if you come, come early. We're back at the hotel. We're eating breakfast. Everything looks great. Today we got minimum tomato, egg, onion, and peppers. Homemade fries. I noticed that in Martin and here, we get some water with our breakfast because it's so dry. I like that they're giving us fresh, cold water. Yeah, so everything's fresh. We really enjoy this. And it has all the staples of a good Turkish breakfast. So we're gonna enjoy and we'll see you after. So we are back out here in the city center of Şanlıurfa and we're going back to the fish park so we can get a better view during the day. And there's also the close bazaar, but I don't think we'll go there. Um, we'll just be here for a bit before we're taking off. So let's go. This place is busy. There's definitely a lot of people out here walking. Um, and definitely compared to last night, this is a lot more full and busy. The water is actually clear. You can see through and you can see fish floating around. There's piles of them over there and some here. Some are big, some are small. I think from this angle, you can appreciate it much more. The water is very clean and you can see all the way to the bottom. And I thought there would be more fish just because from previous videos I've seen it looks like there's a ton of fish but they're kind of spread out and across from here you can see the Shanliulfa castle. On this side there's also more shade and there's a cool breeze which although it isn't full on summer it's still already a lot hotter. It's so close to the water and this is splashing. Now something I didn't learn from watching other videos is that the water goes through different channels around the park so you can actually get to experience it another side of the park. So as you can see behind us, there's the Shanliurfa castle. We won't go up there now, but we did enjoy seeing it in the background of this park. And now we're headed back. So that's it for Shanliurfa. We'll see you at our next stop on our Southeast Turkey road trip.